Please help me welcome Gail Rubin with What Do We Do About All Our Excess Stuff? <laughs> America is truly the land of plenty. And if you're like many Americans, you probably have more material goods in your home than you use, need, or love. The 2007 video called The Story of Stuff says that while Americans make up 5% of the world's population, we consume 30% of the world's natural resources. And we produce 30% of the world's waste. And with the silver tsunami of baby boomers reaching retirement age and perhaps downsizing, we have a big problem on our hands. What do we do with all our stuff? Now, you all know me as the doyen of death. For those of you who missed the definition of the word doyen, that's a woman who's considered senior in a group who knows a lot about a particular subject. So with the publication of my new book, Kicking the Bucket List, 100 Downsizing and Organizing Things to Do Before You Die, I am now the doyen of downsizing. <laughs> <laughs> and I decided to take my own advice in point number 78, lead by example. Get rid of your own stuff first. My in-laws downsized into a senior retirement community, and we were the recipient of some pretty neat stuff, including a very high-end natural gas grill, which sat on our patio for a year and a half until I finally realized, you know what? We are not going to hire a plumber to run a gas line to our patio. <laughs> So I listed that, as well as a rooftop carrier for our car that had been sitting in the loft in the garage for at least 10 years, unused, and unlikely to be used in the future. I listed those on Craigslist. You can list things for free on Craigslist. And I made $700 on those two items. So you can make some money downsizing. <laughs> But then there was another thing I tried to sell, which was a hammock and a stand. 60 bucks on Craigslist, no takers. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to donate it to Habitat for Humanity through their Restore program. Very excellent way to get rid of things and get a receipt for tax deduction purposes at tax time. Well, it was hot, dirty, spidery work getting the stand out from underneath the workbench in the garage, but I did it. Loaded up the hammock and the stand into my Subaru. Then also thought, well, you know, there's some other stuff I'd like to donate. There are those white plastic chairs that leave a white residue on your backside when you sit on it, so <laughs> let's donate those. <laughs> and three camping pads. No way my husband and I are going tent camping anymore. Besides, we have these nice sheepskin rugs that really actually are much better comfort-wise for sleeping on, if you're going to do that kind of thing. And a few other assorted items, I put them in my car. Went over to the Restore Donation Center, after 3 o'clock on a Saturday, they were closed. And I was like, no, I don't want to take this stuff out, but I don't really want to drive around with it for two days until they open up again. But I had an errand to run out San Mateo, and the Goodwill store is out there. And I was like, well, let's go see if the Goodwill store drop-off is open. And in fact, if uh, the store is open, their donation acceptance is open. So I drive up and yeah, they take the hammock and the stand, they take the chairs, but they would not take the camping pads because those are considered mattresses. What to do? Well, give them away. That's another point out of kicking the bucket list. Put a free sign on it and put it out on the curb. <laughs> Actually, within two hours, Two of the pads were gone, but one was still left. 
So I listed it on freecycle.org. That's another great resource. That is dedicated to giving and getting items for free just to keep material goods out of the landfill. Listed it on Freecycle within four hours. A lovely young man named Will had gotten in touch with me. We, I spoke to him on the phone. He came over within 45 minutes and it was perfect for his needs. So yay, we got rid of the camping pads. Now one thing that I was not able to get rid of that I had put in my car, bug getter, slug, snail and slug killer. <laughs> This was another uh, gift from my in-laws when they downsized, but you know what? My lawn is zero escaped. I have nothing for slugs and snails to eat on my property. But this is considered a pesticide, and you cannot donate any of these things to Goodwill or Restore or any of the thrift stores in the area. So I called 311 our handy Albuquerque information service, and said, where can I recycle hazardous waste? And they gave me the name of Advanced Chemical Transport, which is on Edith, between Montano and Osuna on the west side of the road. Four days a week, the public can drop off hazardous materials for free, and they will safely recycle them. And that includes paint, pesticides, automobile fluids, um, floor refinishers, solvents, and compact fluorescent bulbs which have mercury in them. So don't be throwing those compact fluorescent bulbs in your regular trash. There are actually uh, some hardware stores in town that will take used batteries and compact fluorescent bulbs as well. So as, oh and I have one other tip for you. If you've got little cans of paint, or you have cans of paint with just a little amount of paint left in them, a professional painter gave me a tip that you can mix kitty litter in with the paint and let it sit overnight, and it becomes a solid waste that you can safely dis dispose of in your regular trash. So America is truly the land of plenty. And as we look at downsizing our material goods, let's not foul our own nest, and recycle and reduce responsibly. Future generations will thank you for it. Thank you.